certain kind okay. of yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah right so so the father says to the kid look at this guy and the kid will pick a bracket in a matter of seconds he'll say well i'm either at you know maybe three four or five for example and then you see he's already thrown out four levels yeah then the dad will say okay let's have you read the rest of this chapter so the kid reads it it takes like three or four minutes and then he goes back and he says now tell me what level are you at and he'll find a specific level he'll say yeah i can see i'm really at level five no wonder i have trouble with school yeah. you see so now the dad says to him let's move you to level four and i tell you in the chapter how to do that so you, the dad moves the kid up from level five to level four. He is now a better student. That's how simple this is. Yeah, you simplify so it. So every parent in the world. Yeah. Right. Every parent in the world can use this to help their kid be, do better in school. Yeah. So take that, blow that up a, a million times in every direction, and you have this book. Yeah. So... It doesn't really matter what the context is because it's universally applicable because these scales exist on their own. In the same way that the Pythagorean theorem exists on its own. The Pythagorean theorem was true before earth existed and it will still be true after earth no longer exists, okay? Because it's embedded in the fabric of the universe. That is what these scales are. Now, you might quibble about what words I use to express them. That's a legitimate discussion because I spent a lot of time trying to get the right word. You know, what word really says what this level is? So that's kind of a debatable thing because we're talking about language, which is very imprecise. But I absolutely know axiomatically that the scales are correct because I've had a lifetime of experience with them and I've seen them work over and over and over. Similarly, I've had 27 years of direct observation of people with this book. Starting from the first transcript in December of 95, people get this, they like it, they get it. Nobody has ever said to me, I don't get this. It doesn't make any, any sense or anything like that. That's not what happens with this book. So, and the reason that people connect with it is because it's based on natural law. So for example, one of the rules of septemics is you can never skip a level, impossible. Now, it might seem and on rare occasions that you skip the level because either you went through very quickly or very easily or very, uh, without noticing it, but you didn't skip a level. You just went through it quickly or easily. So for example, if you're at the fifth floor and you wanna to go to the first floor, one way or another, you have to go through the fourth, the third, and the second. Whether you take the elevator, the escalator, the stairs, or go outside the building or go down on a rope ladder, okay? So in other words, there, there, there is no uh, escape from the reality of these scales. And that is why I published this book. This is very helpful to people because for example, let's say I stop some stranger on the street and I say, what's your wife's motivation toward you? He's gonna look at me like I'm from Mars. He's gonna say, what are you talking about? How can I know that? There are thousands and thousands of possible motivations. And, and, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say, well, wait a minute now, look at this scale because I have worked out the seven basic motivations. And all the other motivations are subsets of these. So when you look at it in the context of a choice between seven levels, it's not hard to pick between seven levels because some of them are gonna be clearly not relevant. You see? Yeah. So you get a bracket right away. And then when you find, when the guy finds his wife's motivation toward him, that will be an epiphany. He's gonna say, ah, now I see, that explains why she does this, why she does that, why she doesn't like this, why she doesn't like that, you see? And that is how this works. So you can do this with everybody. So for me, uh, knowing this stuff very well, when I meet a person 
either in three dimensions or digitally through the internet, I can find that person on one or several of these scales in a matter of seconds. I can listen to someone speak, for example, for 10 seconds, yeah. 15 seconds. And I know where he is on the scale of literacy because it comes out in the way he speaks. So you see, the beauty of this is people tell you their levels. They yeah. tell you. It's not secret. People yeah. can't help it. Yeah. So for example, I know, and when I say no, I don't mean think. I mean no. Yeah. The way I know that two plus two is four, the basic purpose of every president of the United States going back as far as Franklin Delano Roosevelt and many of the presidents previous to that who I studied, like Lincoln and Washington and Jefferson. And once you know the scale of basic purposes and you study the person, it becomes very clear. Now, what is more important than knowing someone's basic purpose? That is what the person is trying to do. Yeah. And you realize there are only seven. It's not choosing from among a menu of 1,000 or 2,000 or 10,000. It's seven levels. So once you know those are the choices, it's not hard to spot. Yeah. You just have to study the material. Yeah, and then it's not hard to change. I'm not hearing you. So much so that anybody can do. Anybody and everybody. Can do. Yeah. Now, let me, let me tell you. Well, it, it's, this book is for anyone who wants to improve himself levels. Yeah. Then the dad will say, okay, let's have you read the rest of this chapter. So the kid reads it, it takes like three or four minutes. And then he goes back and he says, now tell me what level are you at? And he'll find a specific level. He'll say, yeah, I can see I'm really at level five. No wonder I have trouble with school, yeah. you see? So now the dad says to him, let's move you to level four. And I tell you in the chapter how to do that. Yeah. So you, the dad moves the kid up from level five to level four. He is now a better student. That's how simple this is. Yeah, you simplify so it. So every parent in the world. Yeah. Right. Every parent in the world can use this to help their kid be, do better in school. Yeah. So take that, blow that up a, a million times in every direction and you have this book. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter what the context is because it's universally applicable because these scales exist on their own in the same way that the Pythagorean theorem exists on its own. The Pythagorean theorem was true before earth existed and it will still be true after earth no longer exists, okay? Because it's embedded in the fabric of the universe. That is what these scales are. Now, you might quibble about what words I use to express them. That's a legitimate discussion because I spent a lot of time trying to get the right word. You know, what word really says what this level is? So that's kind of a debatable thing because we're talking about language, which is very imprecise. But I absolutely know axiomatically that the scales are correct because I've had a lifetime of experience with them and I've seen them work over and over and over. Similarly, I've had 27 years of direct observation of people with this book, starting from the first transcript in December of 95. People get this, they like it, they get it. Nobody has ever said to me, I don't get this. It doesn't make any, any sense or anything like that. That's not what happens with this book. So, and the reason that people connect with it is because it's based on natural law. So for example, one of the rules of septemic is you can never skip a level, impossible. Now, it might seem and on rare occasions that you skip the level because either you went through very quickly or very easily or very uh, without noticing it, but you didn't skip a level. You just went through it quickly or easily. So for example, if you're at the fifth floor and you wanna to go to the first floor, 
One way or another, you have to go through the fourth, the third, and the second. Whether you take the elevator, the escalator, the stairs, or go outside the building or go down on a rope ladder, okay? So in other words, there, there, there is no uh, escape from the reality of these scales. And that is why I published this book. This is very helpful to people because for example, let's say I stop some stranger on the street and I say, what's your wife's motivation toward you? He's gonna look at me like I'm from Mars. I'm gonna say, what are you talking about? How can I know that? There are thousands and thousands of possible motivations. And, and, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say, well, wait a minute now. Look at this scale because I have worked out the seven basic motivations and all the other motivations are subsets of these. So when you look at it in the context of a choice between seven levels, it's not hard to pick between seven levels because some of them are gonna be clearly not relevant, you see? Yeah. So you get a bracket right away. And then when you find, when the guy finds his wife's motivation toward him, that will be an epiphany. He's gonna say, ah, now I see. That explains why she does this, why she does that, why she doesn't like this, why she doesn't like that, you see? And that is how this works. So you can do this with everybody. So for me, uh, knowing this stuff very well, when I meet a person, either in three dimensions or digitally through the internet, I can find that person on one or several of these scales in a matter of seconds. I can listen to someone speak, for example, for 10 seconds, yeah. 15 seconds. And I know where he is on the scale of literacy because it comes out in the way he speaks. So you see, the beauty of this is people tell you their levels. They yeah. tell you. It's not secret. People yeah. can't help it. Yeah. So for example, I know and when I say no, I don't mean think. I mean no. Yeah. The way I know that two plus two is four, the basic purpose of every president of the United States, going back as far as Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and many of the presidents previous to that who I studied, like Lincoln and Washington and Jefferson. And once you know the scale of basic purposes and you study the person, it becomes very clear. Now, what is more important than knowing someone's basic purpose? That is what the person is trying to do. Yeah. And you realize there are only seven. It's not choosing from among a menu of a thousand or two thousand or ten thousand. It's seven levels. So once you know those are the choices, it's not hard to spot. Yeah. You just have to study the material. Yeah, and then it's not hard to change. I'm not hearing you. So much so that anybody can do. Anybody and everybody. Can yeah. Do. Now let me, let me tell you. Well, it it's this book is for anyone who wants to improve himself or his life. Yeah. Now you might think that that applies to everybody, and I'm telling you, it doesn't. No. There are many people who are not interested in improving themselves or their lives. These would include psychopaths, sociopaths, narcissists, professional criminals, war criminals, terrorists, torturers, okay. corrupt people, people like that. They're not interested in the food. They're not interested in really doing anything good. You know, no. they're just interested in holding up the next bank, uh, you know, or killing the next victim or whatever it is that these crazy people do. They're not yeah. interested in something good. No. I have actually calculated that approximately 50% of the human race wants to improve oneself or one's life. Okay. The reason I say oneself or one's life is this. Most people in that 50% want to improve themselves. Mm -hmm. But there, there might be some people who don't particularly need to improve themselves, but will be able to improve others. So let's take some hypothetical example. Let's say you have somebody who has 180 IQ, he has a billion dollars in the bank, he lives in a palace, he owns a jet, he drives a Maserati, okay? Now this guy might say, well, you know, I don't really need to improve myself, but he probably has a kid 
who needs help with school. He probably has a wife who needs help with her motivations. He probably has a brother-in-law who has a problem with drinking or something like, so he's going to be able to use this to help the people around him. And I already know from observing this for 27 years, people do not keep this to themselves. They necessarily use it on others because yeah. that's what it's for. It's like yeah. if if you had a box of Band-Aids and I cut myself, you'd say, yeah. here's a Band-Aid. Yeah. You'd give me the Band-Aid and I'd put it on. That's yeah. what this is like. So yeah. if a guy sees that his brother is having a, a lot of trouble with his wife, he'll say to him, come here, okay. take a look at these scales. And he'll show him the scale of sexuality, the scale of uh, allegiance, the scale of uh, basic purposes. All of these things are going to be relevant to him yeah. understanding. And as he looks at these, this situation with his wife is going to become clarified. Yeah. And when his mind is clearer, he can think better about it. So let's say you have a guy, he's dating a girl, right? And he's thinking about marrying her. But he's yeah. not sure what her motivation is, right? This is a very old problem. So he's trying to figure out, does she want to marry me because she loves me? That would be one motivation. Or does she want to marry me because I drive a Lamborghini, I live in a $5 million house, and I own a, a jet, a little jet. See, that's a different motivation. Yeah. And he could look at it, and he can determine her motivation and that will be the difference between him saying, let's get married, or if it turns out the other way, he might say, no thanks, and break off the relationship. Yeah. See, so either way, it's he's better, better off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Because So that's how this works. Yeah. That, that book, uh, I'm going to have to get a copy of the book because um, I, I want to self-improve myself, so. I think that our listeners should definitely pick up copies and pass them around to their friends and family just to keep bettering the world and themselves. So I think that, wow, I'm just, I'm so amazed. I feel like I just took in a lesson right now. I'm going to be leaving your um, book link in the show notes so people can find them and um, a little bit of description of yourself letting people know and this will be on YouTube on my podcast. And um, thank you so much for being here and for educating with all of this human. Okay. So let me just say, let me just say in closing, yeah. I invite your listeners to my website, septemix.com. That's S-E-P-T-E-M-I-C-S.com. And on the website, you can see what many readers have said about it, okay. what many journalists have written about it, what the reviews are, and you can read pieces of the book itself, and then you can decide for yourself if you want to do it. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. That yeah, I'll be leaving that in the show notes as well. Thank you for educating me and my viewers on just our human basis and our, our brains and what we can do to improve ourselves. That's so important. Thank you. Thank you for